Welcome back to another episode of Digital Tidbits. Today is August 29th, 2023. I am your host, Shalako Law. And I am Joe Arias. And we have a special guest today, Jamie Freeby. We conned her into joining us today <laughs> in the conversation. Um, so we have some exciting things that we're going to try this year instead of just jokes. I mean, I know everyone loved our jokes. They do, but yeah. we still have to <laughs> change it up. That's what y'all think. <laughs> we're going to start with tech time savers tech time savers yep and that takes us right into our first thing so keyboard shortcuts i mean we've all been using them for a long time but still there's some people that might not know them that's right right so we're going to well, go over just a couple like simple ones we always right? learn new ones all the time oh, yeah, jamie's exactly. always so, coming over and teaching me new ones right I so you know, we'll start off some short one easy yep, ones basics build into the harder ones you know more advanced ones later so yeah so let's start with the very first one copy Control copy, you know, control C. Control C. Control C, yeah. Uh, so like here, obviously I have a keyboard or a little laptop and I want to mm -hmm. copy it. So I'm going to select it, use that metric, control C. And then I'll go ahead and go into my second slide because that's where I want to paste it. Right. And obviously control, control C, v. You copied it, control V. Is going to paste, we'll paste it. it in there. Yeah. So control okay, so C. So control C to copy, control V to paste. paste it, yep. Okay. It's easy enough. Oh, yeah. So, and it's one of those things that it seems like it's a hard thing to remember at first, but you do it like five to 10 times. And it's automatic. And you have it. It's automatic. Yeah. Right. And now, have you guys ever, ever <clears throat> thought Mess of, things up? Yes, yes, Joe, yes. I mess things up all the time. All the time. But no, like, I never do. I know it, it's one of the things. <laughs> I saw you use it today, maybe. <laughs> right. And it's, you know, people always ask me, so why a C, why a V? You know, the C obviously makes copy, copy. you know, but that the V, sense. they're like, why V? You know, that has nothing to do with it. But, my understanding has always been that it's just because it's right there. It's close, it's close to, to it. it oh, right? yeah. But have you ever thought of something like in your brain to help you remember it or you just do it? Just no, do I just it. do it. Okay. <laughs> because think about it, if they did P for paste, it's going to be a control P? Yeah, it's too far. Too yeah. far. Okay, okay so, so do you have a little shortcut? No, I don't. That's in your reason. Brain? Okay, no. 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 I, I need to think of one, but I don't. So. All right, if we make a mistake and we want to undo it, so what So let's do? go to that one. So yes. So here I have, that's control Z, mm -hmm. right? So control Z will undo it. So I have a sentence here, it says no one likes what? So I'm gonna go in there and say snakes. Cause nobody likes snakes, right? And then I decide, nope, that's not what I want. Some people I know, I made a mistake. I don't. So what do I do? I'm pretty sure Miss Galbraith at bottom does. Control Z. And that brings there it up. There you go. Right? Undo, yes. So control Z is control one Z. of my favorite uh, shortcuts. Right. And it, it, it works just because, a lot. Like you can yeah. press it more than once. It's not just yeah, going to undo the going first back. step. Yeah. It's going to undo multiple steps. Exactly. I think so, I, uh, all right, last one. Last one. So we've learned about copy, paste, undo. So now cut. So you just have something in there. You just need to get rid of it. So you're just going to go in there and select it. And you're going to control X. We'll get rid of it. So okay. if I do that to that snake, that snake's gone because we all hate snakes. Okay, so what if I just cut it, but I want to paste that snake on slide three where it said oh, that I hate snakes. Very good. Or so whatever. It, the way that is. works is so, so it, it cut it and it put it on this on magical clipboard, clipboard, clipboard yeah. right? Yeah. And it's still there. So if, you're right. So if I go back to where I, that sentence, and I say, hey, bring that in there. And remember, we talked about paste. Yeah. So I'm going to paste it in there. Control, Control V. V. And, and there's, there's your snake. snake. Yep. Um, and I do that all the time, too. I'll cut something from one page and go put it on the other page. Yeah. Right, and then what if you wanted to undo that snake? Oh, that's when we do undo. Little yeah. test. Right, control Z. Z. Control Z, yeah. not and C. It, look, and notice it didn't get rid of it because it- Moved it like, back to the like original That's like two steps spot, back, right. remember? Yes. So you gotta remember how many steps you have. So if you wanna get rid of it, you had to do control Z again. So nice. hopefully that'll help, you know, because it. And the purpose of this whole little segment here is just, hey, how can I save time? Yes. You know, because you, normally you could go up there to the top and say, oh, edit, undo, and it even tells you there. So at first, when you're trying to remember what those are, kind of look up there and you're like, oh, there it is, Control-Z. Well, yeah. here's the deal. For someone that's been using Control-Z, or Control-C, Control-V, Control-X, and Control-Z for a long time, it's they're probably like, why in the world are y'all talking about that? But here's the deal. I didn't know about it until probably my seventh year into teaching. Oh. But once I learned it, it was uh, it was one of the biggest times right yeah, and once totally. you know how to use it i don't think i could ever go back to not using it i so, agree with you 100 percent. i you did right click copy paste copy paste and all then the when time. i figured the shortcuts i didn't think i needed it i was like that's right. dumb i gotta remember all that now it's just automatic my fingers do it and i i don't even think about it right 
Just it is major. such a time saver. So. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and move on from our tech time savers into three quick possible fixes for the Chromebooks. So here's the deal. There's always something going on with Chromebooks. Especially whether, after they've been home all, yes. or you know, put up, in not turned on. Our summer, students have been summer, at home. Right, summer, yeah. yeah. But if there's an update in a program, if there is, did I just say the word? I did. Okay, I didn't man. About it. Okay, so if there is an update, if there Still is. Still zero for me. <laughs> So if there is anything that has changed or any push, any programs that have had something be pushed out, anything quirky just happening on your Chromebook that it's like, why is it doing that? Or why is that not working? It should be working, but it's not. We get calls about that all the time. And I feel like we go to three main fixes to begin with. So the first one that everyone is sick and tired of hearing us say is update your Chromebooks. Yes. And teachers really need to know if they are fans of light speed. If the students' Chromebooks are not updated, they can't monitor what yes. they're doing through light right. speed. And so we've had a lot of calls on that. A lot. So, so if you're critical, not seeing your students in light speed, update, update your, your Chromebooks. A good chance, that's why. Yeah. So it's critical for Chromebooks to be open. So we do have a link on that in tidbits. But there's two other fixes that we always go to. What's another one? That we always go to. Besides have you Chromebooks. cleared your cookies cash and cookies? Cash. Yes, or cash and cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually pretty easy to do. But again, it's one of those if you don't know how to do it or where to look right. for it, yeah. you yeah. don't know. And there's a step by a step by step tutorial in there. Makes it easy if yes. you're not sure how to do that. The other fix that doesn't seem quite as common sense is to allow cookies for all time. So you know when you get those little pop-ups and it says, do you want to allow cookies? I feel like teachers and kids sometimes panic like, oh my goodness, is, am, am I supposed to, to accept supposed this? To do this? Like, is this spam? Like, what's going on? Yeah. Well, actually, allowing cookies, allowing all cookies for all time is actually something that we need for programs to also run properly. So sometimes a program won't work properly because cookies aren't being allowed through that program, which is blocking something, if I understand it fully. Yes, correct. So there's also a tutorial on how to do that there. Next thing, we've been talking about this. We talked about this last time, but I think we still need to, just because it's still that beginning of the year. Teachers are kind of going into their, out of their procedure part of the year where you know, talking about rules and all that. Now I'm getting more to our, okay, I'm going to use instruction. this. Instruction. Um, more instruction stuff. Not that they haven't been using doing instruction, but that clear touch, you know. Yes. I got to make sure I, that I'm using it correctly, you know, not just as a digital screen. In there again, clear touch handbook. Mm -hmm. I mean, go in there. You'll find something every new probably that you didn't know. Everything from cleaning it to the remote control yes. to activities that you can create for your students and even send to their Chromebooks. All of that is included in this guide. Right. And then the big one that I think we talked about this last time, but I'm going to talk about it again, is that collage. And remember, yes. collage, I mean, Jamie, Makes you mobile. it's going to be, yeah, yeah, it's going to allow you to be hands free, move around your classroom, work with your students without standing at your board or behind your computer. Right. And that's what every teacher wants is to be out with their kids and able to interact with them and all while projecting what they need on their screen. Right, yeah. so if you so. have a teacher Chromebook and you wanna be able to walk around the room and still be able to do what you need to off that computer, or in this case, your browser, you know, look at collage and help in that, yes. that little. And that's in that user guide, exactly how to get to it, how to use it, um, and the benefits of it, so. Snowflake Chorus is another thing that is, like that's where the bang for the buck is on the clear touch board, yes, in my totally. opinion. And once teachers really figure out how to use Chorus, it's another one of those things, once you figure out the benefit of using it, most teachers don't ever want to go away from using it again. All right, so Canvas. Canvas is our LMS and most people love it. Some people don't love it so much. It's just but, one of those where it's just a lot of stuff. So it's a lot. Where there's they, a lot you know. in Canvas that you can do. So that's why this next thing yes. is going to be awesome. So there's a new thing called Panda Pros. So the Panda Professionals. So in case if teachers aren't familiar with this, Canvas is actually called Instructure. Like Instructure is the, I don't know if you'd say the company. Parent but company. Parent right, company, yeah. The owner, the. So their logo is a panda, a panda bear. So Panda Pros, Panda Professionals, they have new time slots now where teachers can go online and they can schedule a free 45 minute private one-on-one -on -one coaching session 
that's tailored to them. So let's say that a teacher goes in, books a time slot for 45 minutes. They can just ask that Canva Panda Pro, Panda Professional, whatever questions they have. Canvas. Did I say Canva? Yeah. Oh, I do that all the time. Canvas. Thank you. Because that's Canvas, the LMS. Canva? No. Canvas, yeah, Canvas. LMS. Thank you. Um, and so they can ask whether it's questions about studio or will you just look at my course and see if the structure of my course flows or if you have suggestions or what would be a better way to do this or tell me the benefit of new quizzes versus classic quizzes. And here's the deal. Our department can definitely support that. Yes. But sometimes but it's nice to even be able to have a 45 minute coaching session on a weekend. And Joe and I were looking at the time blocks with yep. Scott Hatfield the other day. And they even have some times offered on Saturdays and Sundays. On the weekends? Yep. On the weekends. Oh, I did not they know they had it on the mm -hmm. weekends. That's awesome. Yeah, they do. I know we don't want to work on the weekends, but every once in a while, there's something that might pop up that you're doing for your class. And, and you might think, hey, I really need to talk to somebody about this. That would be a great time to do that. It is. Now, those time slots are only available through the end of September, I believe. September 31st, I believe. Was the last day. So after September, we will not have that um, opportunity anymore. Okay, so we really need to take advantage of it during yes. the time that we have it. Correct. So Edpuzzle, it's been around for a bit. Had a lot of great features mm -hmm. added to it. A lot you know, of cool new features. Yeah, come a lot yes. of cool yes. new features. So one of the new ones that just came out was that now you could add audio to those questions. You know, so you type up your question, but you want to add audio just for that student. Audio that like it. bring it in or audio like your own voice? It's your own voice, yeah. Okay. So your you voice. record yeah. yourself. To the questions question. and the answer choices, both. Both of them. Yes. That's great. Yeah, so real simple. Instructions will be in there. I mean, look and I those. don't believe you can specify like these certain students get the audio questions and these students right. don't. I think it's an all or thing. Yeah. But here's the deal. Even kids... Sure, kids that have the accommodation of needing an oral administration, they can get that now through Edpuzzle, but it's good for any kid. Mm -hmm. Any kid can benefit from it. Yes. So if in doubt, just add it there so it's accessible for anyone. Yeah, that's great. Now, Canva for real, Canva. Sure, not Canvas. Canva. Yeah, not Canva. Canva, not Canva. 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 Your okay. wheelhouse, Jamie, your, your love. <laughs> so, um, Canva has been around. Teachers have been using it. We've been using it. We love Canva. Uh, today actually is our 10 year anniversary. Oh yeah, it is. Yes. All that so confetti. 10 years, we got the time. Have you guys seen the confetti over and over again? Yes, I have. It's like, a, yeah. right. <laughs> can you tell who's been in Canva a lot today yes. and is tired of the confetti? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, been a party all day in Canva. <laughs> uh, so Lee, and I think you've been on some of the meetings maybe too. Yes. With yes. Canva. Um, it, there's been a thing called Canva Teams. And whenever you sign up for an account, an educator account, they prompt you to potentially join a team or right. create a team. Well, um, now we have like 115 teams in the district, yes. which there is no way to know not to do that. But Lee and Jamie have been working with Canva. Right, and Trevor, our uh, technology Trevor. department as well. So to switch from Canva Teams to Canva for Education. Yes, correct. Which is going to be more structured in AISD. And from what I understand, it's gonna be by campus now. Yes, it should be by campus to make it a little bit more streamlined and easier to use instead of going which team am I a part of, or you try to join a team and then somebody has to give you access on the other right. side and, and they don't even know where to look to give you access right. to that. So this is gonna help everything out um, and we're working all the kinks out on that right now. So if you're a part of multiple teams, we're trying to work on getting that streamlined so you can be in one place, have the right thing. At your um, campus, right? Right, yes. Instead of it being so confusing and so, which, which one am I in? From what I understand, correct if I'm wrong, but it sounds like what we really need teachers and administrators, everyone in the district to know at this point is, please do not create or join any more Canva teams. Correct. Right now. Yes. Because those Canva teams are going away. Eventually. Eventually. You will not, not lose yet. any of your stuff. That's the great part about it. We have Good. we have talked to them and made sure, because there's so many of us, I know me, if I lost my stuff, I, I would, would cry. I would, would cry for awful. <laughs> it would be awful. So um, we're working with them to make sure we don't lose any of our content that we've right. created in there and that it's just gonna be a little less confusing once we get awesome. that all worked out. So And so we could see changes. We could see some weird things over the next three weeks. And from what Lee was telling me, we don't have a date set yet where this right. is all gonna take place. Right. There's still several more meetings that are potentially gonna happen over the next few weeks as this transition rolls Being out. in a district as large as we are, it's gonna take a little time to get all that 
that streamlined. But it's going to be great once it is. We will also keep everybody updated with um, updates as they come out and anything that we find out if you, they need to do on their side. But it, they shouldn't have to. It should be all uh, taken care of on the back side. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Can't wait. Oh, me either. Instead of looking through all the accounts I have to oh, look through. And all of us like myself that have our .NET account still yes, tied to it. Yes, that's been a... They're going to be working on getting that switch correct, to .org yes. too. That, and that's a lot of people in the district right now. They have right. a .NET and a .org. And their creations are in both of those accounts. We're going to put those all together so you can find everything in one and place. Merge and merge them or put them together. Yes, yes. Good. Thanks for joining us on this ever-evolving journey that is digital learning. Until next time, always remember... Cross your T's, dot your I's, and use these tidbits to kiss those digital learning fears goodbye.